نور وجلال يغشاها يحرسها ربي ويراها اذكرني امامها وادعيني وادعي ما شاء الله the Salat al-Dhuhr has just been performed in the Haram Sharif in Masjid al-Nabawi. We are now, Alhamdulillah, heading towards Al-Mathaf, the Museum of Al-Madina al-Munawara, Allah Akbar. Where contained wherein are many models and relics of the beautiful city that we are in. Very much looking forward to to seeing all of those and sharing those with you, Inshallah. وادعيني هنيئا هنيئا يا رايح للهادي غرى مشغل لما لا كل فؤادي هنيئا هنيئا يا رايح للهادي غرى مشغل لما لا كل فؤادي ادخل من باب السلام بتأدب واحترام ادخل من باب السلام بتأدب واحترام سلم على طه التهام واسأله شفاعة وادعيني وادعيني انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال يغشاها انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال يغشاها يحرسها ربي ويراها اذكرني امامها وادعيني سبحان الله شيخ حسن طاهر سبحان الله حفظك الله امي الله بريزيرف يو سبحان الله از جست جست شون سمثينغ ابسولوتلي بيوتيفول اند اميزينغ ذس از ذا ذا بلايس اوف مكه Al Mukarma, Subhanallah, and this is, uh, as is mentioned, after the Taufan, after the flooding of uh, that took place at the time of Nuh alayhi salam. And let me just take you through uh, this uh, amazing uh, model that they put here. Uh, Subhanallah, here uh, you will see is the the Khayma of Hajar alayhi salam. So this is the tent of where Ibrahim alayhi salam left, left Hajar alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam. Uh, in this location uh, and thereafter what we're seeing in, in in the in the mapping here is this is Mount Safa and then this is Mount Marwa and as we know from the famous story that Hajra alayhi salam was looking for water and she started a Safa and went to Marwa and they did this seven times and we will do the same when we do our Umrah and our Hajj and subhanAllah what we're finding uh, here is Al Akama. Al Akama is the the foundation place of the Kaaba. This is where it was known by the uh, the tribes of the Arabs, of the people of, of of the earth. In fact, this is a raised platform where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala was worshipped. This was known from the beginning of time, from the time of uh, Adam and Islam, and some ulama even say even before that. And Mashallah, here you're seeing the very famous well of Zamzam. And uh, as uh, the Sheikh was just explaining to us, Zamzam in the language of Hajar al Islam, it meant to gather together, gather, gather, because she was worried that the water would seep away. After it went, and Subhanallah, and this was a, a place known. The Sheikh was just explaining to us. This was a trade route between Yemen to Sham. So from from Yemen to the the, the Levant, the the modern day Syria area, and this is of course where the the tribe of Jurham will later settle. And نور وجلال يغشاها يحرسها ربي ويراها اذكرني امامها وادعيني وادعيني هنيئا هنيئا يا رايح للهادي غرام شغال لما لا كل فؤادي هنيئا هنيئا يا رايح للهادي غرام شغال now standing um, at the site of the development of the Kaaba Sharifa. Uh, SubhanAllah, it begins at the time of uh, Ibrahim al Islam, if not even before that, where this is where this is the raised part. It's a small hill which is raised in the valley of Bakka in the, the modern day city of Mecca, which is referred to in Arabic as Al Al Akama. Al Akama fi Wadi Ibrahim alayhi salam. SubhanAllah. So this is where Ibrahim alayhi salam left his family by the side of this in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be worshipped. And what we're seeing now is the development of the, the Kaaba uh, uh, Sharifa that we find now this is the constructing of what Ibrahim alayhi salam he did. So from that location, this is as the, the Quran speaks of that he and his young son uh, Ismail Islam they 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 rafa'a qawa'id they raised the the walls of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's very interesting here uh, brothers and sisters is that in this original uh, Kaaba there are two gateways uh, it didn't have a saqaf it didn't have a roof and you can see some shelter there which is where the the modern day mizab al rahma is the the fount of mercy is to be found now we move on to 
the construction of uh, the Quraysh itself. And subhanAllah, what we're seeing in the construction of the Quraysh is that the, the size of the Kaaba has been reduced. So here it was a very rectangular shape, mustatil, but when it came to the Kaaba, and Kaaba literally meaning a cuboid, the size of it has been reduced. The walls have been raised, and now there is now we're starting to find a roof. Now the reason for that, as you'll know from, from the seerah, is that the Quraysh, when they rebuilt the Kaaba Sharifa, they were concerned that only halal funds be used to construct the Kaaba. So they actually ran out of halal funds, and that is why the they reduced the size of the Kaaba in order to fund it only with the halal. Now what you're also finding is the Hatim, the Hijrah of Ismail Islam, very famous, uh, the semicircular wall around the Kaaba, because the reality is that was actually originally part of the Kaaba Sharifa. The, the, the value of that subhanAllah now is that the ulama tell us that we, we still as common Muslims have the opportunity subhanAllah to still pray in the Kaaba Sharifa, which is, of course is very difficult to do. So the Sheikh is just mentioning that when the pilgrims, they come and do their tawaf, it's very important for them to go do their tawaf around the Hatim, the, the Hatim area, because there is not permissible for them to go through the uh, Hatim because that would be going through the Kaaba. The tawaf must be done around the Kaaba. And subhanAllah, moving into the next phase, this is uh, in the phase of one of the very famous companions, uh, Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu, who ruled Mecca for, for many years. And what we're finding now, subhanAllah, is the Kaaba has actually gone back to its original foundation. So it's, it's now very reminiscent of at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, again with more uh, raised walls. But the actual shape of the Kaaba, subhanAllah, is now uh, mustatil, it's very rectangular. And where at the time of the, the Quraysh, they reduced it to one door, bab wahid so it was one door, but now Bibabain. Now we have two doors now in the in the construction that Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu did. Subhanallah. And now we're also seeing Al Qiswa min Awal Marwa Al Qiswa huna. So we start. So now we're starting to also find the, the covering, the, 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 the cloth of the Qiswa, but it was even before the, the or around the time of the Quraysh as well. Allah. So the Shaykh is explaining that the first person to actually put the black Qiswa cloth or put the Qiswa cloth onto the Kaaba Sharifa was, they say, it was Ismail alayhi salam, subhanAllah. As we move to the next development point of the, the, the Kaaba Sharifa, this is now in the, under the time, the, the period of uh, Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi. Uh, now we're finding that the, the, the Kaaba has been reshaped completely again back to the time of the, the Quraysh, where again, the, now you can see the, the Hijr wall, the, there's only one door. Uh, so he, he actually deconstructed this. Uh, from the time of Abdullah ibn Zubair back to uh, as it was at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam under the rule of, of the Quraysh. In its next phase, we're seeing the Ottoman uh, influence on the, the, the Kaaba Sharifa. And as you can see now, very clearly, it's starting to look very, very similar to what we see today in modern day Mecca, subhanAllah. And now we come to the time under the, the Saudi rule of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which is now very much the pilgrims will recognize this is the Kaaba Sharifa with, with, with the, the black kiswa cloth and with all the calligraphy writing there as well, subhanAllah. And uh, speaking of which, right in front of us, Allah Akbar, is a part of the, the qiswa itself, which date back 250 years to the Ottoman Empire, subhanAllah. Uh, subhanAllah, feeling very emotional, um, just heard from the Sheikh uh, uh, trying to explain this model to us. Uh, you'll see the, the Kaaba, uh, and you'll see at the far end, Medina al Munawwara. And what this is illustrating is the trade routes between the two cities, but more importantly, the, the, the two lit up paths is the path to the right is where the normal trade route would take place. And the path to the left was by the, by the sea. The one to the left is the one that the Prophet Sallallahu decided to take with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in order to um, evade the, the trackers which were sent by the Quraysh. SubhanAllah, the Quraysh offered uh, trackers 100 camels as a reward to track down the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as you see on the path, you'll see a, a khayma, a, a, a tent just to the right of the path. This is where a very famous incident took place that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi met Umm Ma'bad radiallahu anha where he he went there seeking uh, milk and she said, look, we're having a very difficult time and uh, subhanAllah, um, the animals are not producing any milk and that's just, just one goat there. And subhanAllah, the Prophet والسلام, he said, let me milk that goat. And he did and through his, you know, the, the blessings of the Messenger وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed it that the milk just came gushing out. And Abu Ma'bad, her husband, returned to say, where did you get all this milk from? 
and, the, and uh, Umm Ma'bad explained to, to her that we had an amazing visitor and she describes the Prophet in the most beautiful of terms. And then further up the journey, subhanAllah, we get to one of the miqad points, the, uh, the, the point where the ihram is put on in the paint of uh, the uh, Juhfa, an area called Juhfa. Now, that area where you're seeing a crown and two bracelets, that's indicating, subhanAllah, a place where Suraka ibn Malik, who later becomes Muslim, mashaAllah, is somebody who was tracking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, I, I, I want to, the, the reward of these 100 camels. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, should I not inform you of something which is better than that? You will one day wear the crown and the bracelets of the king of Persia, subhanAllah. And this happened at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu. But the funny story is, Umar radiallahu anhu said, you can wear them, as the hadith says, but the hadith never indicated you can keep them, subhanAllah. So he wore them momentarily and he said, okay, now give them back. Allahu Akbar. And as we move further and uh, through the tracks, you find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu on the Qaswa, on his famous camel, enter into Medina al munawwara Allahu Akbar. Mashallah. And uh, the Shaykh is explaining that the, the Hijrah itself, it took 10 days uh, for the Prophet Sallallahu to go from the, the Kaaba to Medina al munawwara انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال ليغشاها انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال ليغشاها يحرسها ربي ويراها اذكرني أمامها وادعيني وادعيني أبرغي إلهي جنة فيها هنا أنت رجائي أبغي إلهي جنة فيها هنا ما شاء الله directly in front of me is an outstanding model of the battle of Uhud. This is that beautiful mountain which is a mountain of the mountains of paradise subhanallah. And in front of me directly there is the Jabal al-Rumah, the mount where the 50 archers of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum stood. And in front of them uh, there is the modern site of the Jami' Sayyid al-Shuhada, the masjid, which is for the leader of the Shuhada, the martyrs, Hamza radiallahu anhu. And in front of him is his final resting place, along with the other uh, 70 to 75 companions who were shaheed that day of the Battle of Uhud. And subhanAllah, just as we scan, we're speaking about here the, the, the Battle of Uhud. And just uh, directly next to that in the exhibition, Allahu Akbar, is the battle of the trench, Ghazwat al-Khandaq or Ghazwat al-Ahzab, where again you can clearly see the mount that we're seeing in front of us is the mount of Salah. This is where the Prophet ﷺ prayed for three days for victory. Uh, and you can see now the markings of the trench, which of course is very difficult to see now because the trench after uh, the battle was covered up even at the time of the Sahaba. And of course this was the idea of Salman al-Farisi.